welcome back to another fantastic episode. In it, I have David Dobrovitsky, the CEO and founder of Glitter Finance. Glitter Finance is a bridge bridging together the Algorand, Solana, Cosmos, and Kudos ecosystems. This was a fantastic interview, and I'm very grateful for David for coming on the show today. In it, we discussed all sorts of things, including how the bridge works, what to do with your wrapped assets, integrated yield on the bridges themselves, and so much more. If you like the content, smash that thumbs up button and consider subscribing to the channel. And ping that notification bell because we have a whole bunch of interviews coming out for the next two weeks and you won't want to miss any of those. To support the channel further, check out the description down below for links to my newsletter, links to affiliate partners that will help the channel, and a donation address that will obviously help the channel grow further. We appreciate any and all support, even those that just watch, don't like, don't subscribe, don't comment for the YouTube algorithm. We like you too. All jokes aside, I appreciate you tuning into this episode and enjoy my discussion with David of Glitter Finance. How you doing, David? I'm good. Thank you. Good to be with you. Of course. Thanks for coming on the show today. Uh, my pleasure. So Glitter Finance uh, marks itself as the one bridge, you know, bridging together Algorand, mm -hmm. Solana, Kudos, and I believe one other, uh, what is it, Cosmos, the Cosmos ecosystem. Now, could you give a little background on, you know, Glitter Finance itself and a little background on yourself before we dive a little deeper in? Sure. Um, so I was a musician from the age of five to the age of 27. Uh, what, did you, um, what, what did you play real quick? A classical violin. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, yeah. And basically, uh, around my early 20s, I started to kind of venture more and more into business, uh, mostly to promote my own career and really just gaining the basic sk skills of pr promotion, business development, uh, to an extent, sales um, management. Um, and so from that, uh, in my late 20s, I then just went all the way into business. I started pretty much at the lowest rung um just the basic sales and then i went corporate um and then finally i you know got into startups and uh you know really discovered that startups are in fact my my biggest passion um and so you know uh one of the things that i was very good at was developing startups you know uh, because it had so much to do with um self-promotion um, that, that, that those skills that you learn when you trying to promote yourself as a musician very easily trend, were, were transferable into promoting startups and new ideas. It was very similar how to create a reputation from scratch, how to um, place yourself in the market from nothing. And so um, people started to reach out to me. I, tr I tried it a few times in different um, fields uh, and eventually uh, I, I, as I like to say, due to market forces, I got into blockchain, basically. Yeah. I was working as a business development uh, a person uh, and inside sales for a company that was developing highly engineered cables and selling to uh, companies like Google, for example. They were supplying them. Uh, we were working to, to supply Tesla. Um, and basically, due to the downturn, I just kind of found myself without a job. And uh, eventually, uh, trying to you know get back on my feet, I got into blockchain as a new field. Um, you know, I was hired by a marketing uh, and development agency, and um, kind of went from there. Uh, joining this field, at first, I, I you know I worked to develop my connections within the in industry in the sector. Um, I and eventually, I just learned um, a lot about the technology. Got very hooked. I was living around the Boston area and I learned about Algorand and, you know, kind of uh, eventually I started my own ventures and really the rest is history. Uh, so uh, in terms of Glitter, Glitter is my third project. So it's my third try. Um, and really it's uh, third time's the charm. Uh, so they say. I had a couple of other, yeah, I, I had a major part to play in a couple of other uh, projects that raised enormous amounts of money. Actually, one of them raised a lot of money. The other one didn't. They were in different ecosystems. Uh, for various reasons, I left. Um, most of the time, the reasons had to do with the fact that the projects just didn't go in the direction that I wanted them to go, that I um, that my convictions were. 
yeah. they didn't go where, where, you know into into what I was convinced should should be. So um, I decided to try the third time, and with glitter, I you know ultimately I, I really tried to make it into something that um, was in line with my values, with what I thought was right, with what I thought would make a really special product, and that's pretty much it. So what sets Glitter Finance apart? It's supposed to be the one bridge, but what's interesting about Glitter Finance is a lot of bridges you see, at least uh, building in the Algorand ecosystem, are very focused on bridging together Ethereum and Algorand, where Glitter Finance is one of the only ones that I know of that are working on these types of bridging between Algorand, Solana, Cosmos, and Kudos. Could you speak a little bit as to uh, why you chose those ecosystems to uh, connect to first? So I'm one of those people, I don't like to do what everybody else does. I, I, th I think that it's, first of all, I think it's a bad business model. Mm -hmm. You can do what everybody else does if you do it absolutely better than everybody else. But in, 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 in something like bridging Ethereum to another chain, so many people do it that it's almost like become like, okay, who else is going to build a bridge to bridge to yeah. Ethereum? Um, you know, in, in, in Algorand alone, uh, I believe that they're currently something like three bridges to ethereum you know if not four yeah that i, I know so. of <laughs> uh so um i i was you know for, for me it was kind of like okay yes the the tvl is really good the amount of users is really good but you're going to be doing exactly what everybody else is doing yeah so for me um solana was a very interesting challenge because i genuinely admire their DeFi ecosystem i feel like the initial hype that that blockchain got drew some of the best minds to it, you know, in terms of DeFi. And that makes it really, really interesting uh, to work with. Um, the certain revolutionary things were done uh, via Serum, Radium, and many other startups that they have. And, you know, when you join that to Algo, what you have uh, a chance to do is potentially build a product that, yes, it's very difficult to build because you're talking about two very different uh, lang uh, languages in Rust and Teal. Um, you're 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 dealing with non-EVM compatible blockchains, but you have the chance to potentially meld together this incredible, um, you know, inspiring DeFi ecosystem in Solana with incredible quality of blockchain that you got on Algorand. And also very stable ecosystem, very, very, you know, very good followers that generally like um, there's almost no scams in Algorand. I mean, there's a reason for that because it's a really great community. So yeah. you have a chance to, to mix all of, all of, you know, all of these really big positives and it becomes a very interesting ecosystem. Um, from there, why Cosmos really, I mean, Kudos is a Cosmos blockchain. So we're talking about Cosmos family of blockchains. I personally really like the tech. Um, I think that Cosmos kind of really nailed um, interoperability, in my opinion, or at least interoperability in the way that these types of blockchains try to solve interoperability, yeah. you know, which is to have many sister blockchains, you know, in a, in a kind of a system. And I think Cosmos did a marvelous job with it. I think it's, first of all, Cosmos is easy to build on. Uh, there are also... Just there's so many interesting blockchains there now. And so really, you give yourself a lot of material to work with in, in terms of strengthening your, your own ecosystem if you if you start working with, with, with this kind of, uh, with, with Cosmos. Yeah, that's really interesting because yeah, I don't know enough about the Cosmos ecosystem, but just that little snippet right there is going to convince me enough to do a, a little bit of a deep dive yeah. after this. Uh, I'm curious, is it Currently, uh, you know, Glitter Finance is on mainnet as of right now. I believe that was uh, as of a couple of weeks ago or a couple of days ago. Is that correct? It was a couple of days. Uh, we, uh, we were doing a second test net. And really right now we're in a test mainnet phase. We are okay. most, we're, we're launched, but we are, we're still testing out all of the things. But basically I would, I would expect within a week that we would make an official announcement. Right now we are just letting our community know that we're on mainnet and we're having everybody and their mother try the platform pretty much and fantastic and is the uh, main net integration is that just between algorand and solana currently currently yes absolutely uh when do you plan on integrating the other chains that we were just speaking of uh, cosmos and uh, kudos um you know as soon as possible really yeah. um we are um 
look, uh, I would I have to say, uh, I'll, uh, bridging Algo and Soul, uh, you know, wasn't like a walk in the park. You know, we're talking about very very different blockchains built really built not to talk to each other. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and so um, we went through uh, you know an incredibly intense five and a half month period where we're just building the MVP, and then we spent another three and a half months on test uh, on um, on testnet and being uh, audited by various organizations uh, and you know solving ironing everything out um, so I, I think that it's it's a it's a pretty nice accomplishment for a t- you know a tiny company like like glitter um, and um, at the same time you know we're very excited to move forward to develop new things um, there are definitely a couple of other things that we want to release before plunging into a new bridging. Mm-hmm. For example, we have a couple of products we developed along the way to help us. Um, and that includes a Solana mass token distribution system that we will um, finish up. Uh, Solana token minter. Uh, we also want to make a uh, swap that allows the XGLI on Algo and XGLI on, on Sol to be uh, interchanged easily via our, our, our platform. And that really will make our, uh, the lives of our community much easier because yeah. they won't have to constantly go to a centralized exchange just to interchange the two tokens. Um, so we have, we do want to finish up a, a few other things, but uh, generally speaking, I would I would say probably come September or late August we'll we'll be able to start the bridging again. Fantastic! And you know, on the glitter uh, white paper and whatnot, it's. You speak of integrating yield into the platform, which is really, really interesting concept. And then when you look down at the roadmap around Q4 of this year, it's set to, or hopefully set to uh, add integration of Algorand yield farms, as well as integration of Solana yield farms. Will those yield farms be accessible directly on like the bridge app itself? Yeah. Um, so right now, I'm not going to go too deeply into our plans here because uh, some of it is is actually sensitive information because uh, they're kind of like you know we're we're not going to give a lot of away, away until we're ready. We're always trying to get uh, the alpha a, over here. Yeah, we have a very good idea of how to integrate integrate DeFi into the bridge structure for Algorand mm-hmm. because there is a protocol in Algorand that would allow us to do it, and all we have to do is an easy integration. Um, on Solana, we definitely can do it. The question mark for us right now, and this is something that we will uh, measure and study um, within the company and then make a decision, is whether we really want to fully integrate DeFi into the bridge or whether we want to create our own blockchain and then create a DeFi platform on top of that that will connect uh, that the bridge will connect to. Um, both uh, are very good. There, there, there's definitely um, reasons um, and the pros to do to do either. Yeah. Um, but but it's it's an internal decision that we kind of have to have to make, and we'll we'll have a discussion on it. Uh, potentially, what we'll do is we'll just do a bit of both. We'll integrate um, some forms of DeFi into the bridge, um, and then we will also you know do our own uh, chain and do a, a DeFi uh, platform there as well, or various protocols there as well. Fantastic. And, you know, there's currently the X soul on the Algorand blockchain, which is the wrapped Solana on Algorand blockchain. Uh, are there any, you know, what is there to do with the X soul currently? And are there plans to create more use cases for these wrapped tokens and reasons for people to uh, bridge those tokens in the first place? Well, currently there's nothing to do with them because we're on test mainnet. Uh, that's why we haven't announced yet. Um, we are setting up a pool on a DEX, a well-known DEX on Algorand. Um, we will be setting up staking incentives as well as farming incentives. Um, and we will be doing a lot with it actually. Um, but just because we haven't announced a public test net, um, mainnet yet, uh, that's why there's there's not much to do with it. But um, all in all, I mean, for trading purposes, we will definitely create an ecosystem around it. We'll make sure that it's valuable that there's a lot that you can do with it in the ecosystem. And uh, that will be probably set up within a week, week and a half. 
Awesome. That's great to hear. I recently noticed on the Twitter that there were, you know, a little bit of partnerships with Cometa from Algorand mm-hmm. as well as Yieldly. Are there going to be uh, pools on both of those apps for, I believe, the X, uh, XGLI token? Uh, well, there is already a pool on Yieldly oh, okay. uh, for the XGLI. Um, I think it, it's going to last one more month. Um, for Cometa, yes, absolutely, there are going to be pools. Um, and there are, other, there are potentially more things we can do uh, with them as well. And we're, of course, always very glad and interested to work with Yuli. They're a great team, yeah. uh, great protocol. And uh, so um, ideally speaking, we'd love to continue the relationship with both of them and uh, continue to develop uh, different ways to, to trade with, our, uh, with the assets that, the, that Glitter produces. Yeah, it's exciting. Cometa launches on the 5th of August, I believe, and they're about to come on the mm-hmm. show as well. So it's, a, it's an exciting time for the ecosystem. Uh, I'd like to talk yeah. a little bit more about the XGLI uh, token and, uh, you know, what its mm-hmm. use cases are and how the, well, I know it's a governance token or primarily, but, you know, how is, how will the governance structure for Glitter Finance be set up and how will users be uh, using their XL, uh, XGLI tokens? Okay, so let me just kind of clarify this. Um, when I was creating Glitter, I was creating creating Glitter not from the Algorand ecosystem, but from the Solana ecosystem initially. And the plan was initially to bridge Solana to Ethereum. Um, what happened was the same thing that's ha- that you know I told you about earlier. I did some business analysis and I realized that there were around 50 startups trying to bridge Solana to Ethereum. And I really felt like there's what 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 the heck's the point? Like, so yeah. I'm gonna be the 51st, you know. Uh, so eventually, you know, having been an advisor to a couple of Algorand projects, I decided that it was a pretty awesome ecosystem. It wouldn't be, w- w- wouldn't it be awesome if <laughs> I bridged Solana to Algo instead? So that's basically w- what happened. Now, the people that I was working with at the time to develop the project, they came from the Sol ecosystem. And as you know, in the Sol ecosystem, a lot of things are done by DAOs. Um, in, in Algorand, that's also the case, but it's not as, I would say, it's not as much as in Sol. Um, you know, even uh, a lot of liquidity in Solana is, is, is connected via Serum. Um, so basically, the DAO governance is an incredibly important uh, structure. And you can see that in, in, in important protocols like Solend, for example, where the DAO is like the biggest thing ever. Um, when we switched to Algo, and as the, the project started to develop, I became dissatisfied with the gover- with the, I would say, token utility that we created. I just felt that we created one thing, and then when we switched to Algorand, as, as the project developed, it didn't work with what the project became. Yeah. Um, and so what what essentially happened is I basically redesigned the token utility um, as you know we started to grow. And that is a very good thing because in reality, the token went f- from a hypothetical DAO to an actual use case, actual value. And that value is currently being expanded. Um, now, what, what are the current utility, uh, utility um, characteristics of, of the XGLI? Well, first of all, we decided to spread the XGLI between Solana and Algorand. Um, and you know, a lot of people were telling us that we're nuts and that it's going to create a ton of problems. But what it actually did is it eventually allowed us to create a light bridging mechanism that runs parallel to the bridge. Um, so where, where a trader can transfer value very easily between the XGLI in one chain and the XGLI in another chain. And then in addition to that, we kind of created this uh, mentality and, and system that, that basically any chain that we decide to integrate on the bridge, we will burn part of the Solana supply because there's a 375 million Solana XGLI to 125 million Algo. Okay. And so the idea is anytime we integrate a blockchain into the bridge, we burn part of the um, XGLI on Solana and we basically create a native token, the XGLI supply on that blockchain. So what happens is you're, you always have this, this parallel bridge to the, to the actual bridge. Um, so that's one utility. And the, the other utility for the XGLI is that basically we will also give um, exposure um, of farming 
and swap fees for hold, uh, holders in, within the ecosystem. So that's another thing that we kind of changed. Um, the other thing that we did is because we, you know, are making the XGLI native to all the blockchains that we support, what happens is that you can potentially use the XGLI to stake, for example, in three or four different chains at the same time or to farm stake. And to basically, it becomes an incredibly flexible investment uh, tool. You know, it stops being just a, just a um, you know, ecosystem token. And so what the XGLI ultimately has become uh, and the way it's now conceived of is as a blockchain agnostic token that exists basically to provide both light bridging and flexible investment uh, through multiple ecosystems seamlessly. And so these are the, this is the actual utility of the XGLI at this point. Awesome. Well, I appreciate that answer. Um, you know, I mentioned earlier, well, actually you mentioned earlier, a, a bit of an audit process. Are there audits publicly available currently that people can go view for Glitter Finance? Yes. So um, we had an audit by uh, CERTIC, um, a very large, long audit. Um, yeah, they're and thorough. It's yeah. And it's available um, in a bridge that glitterfinance.org. Um, and basically, uh, on the side, there's a button called audits and you can take a look. We had penetration low tests done by RD auditors from the Solana ecosystem. Um, we also did two bug bounties. Um, we also were audited by a centralized exchange I, whose name I'm not going to name. And we had an inspection done uh, by the Algorand Al Foundation. Uh, and uh, we're actually going to go have another audit uh, done by RD auditors of just of our Solana side. Um, that's going to be done on the, you know, well, in, in August, early August, put them this way. And um, we're, we're just covering all our bases, basically. Um, so, um, and then also um, we exposed um, the um, Algorand backend also to the Algorand developer community. So um, there was an enormous amount of, um, actual auditing, inspection, checking, whatever yeah. whatever you want to call it. There was a lot of that done. Um, the you know, developer that initially created much of this bridge uh, is also an Algorand uh, developer ambassador. So um, there was a lot of um, checking and, and precaution taken in creating this. Fantastic. And you mentioned centralized exchanges. I won't, I won't have you name that one, but I am curious, uh, what centralized exchanges will XGLI be on or are, you, or, or are you in the process of getting XGLI on, if you can name any? Uh, so Buybox was the first exchange um, and, uh, you know, our community got very used to them. <laughs> uh, the second exchange we just recently uh, listed on is uh, BitTrue. Uh, and then we probably one or two more. Uh, I'm not going to name them before we list on them. Yeah, that um, makes sense. Yeah. And you mentioned bug bounties. Are there any other ongoing bug bounties or way for the community to participate in, uh, you know, maybe searching out any potential vulnerabilities that there might be? Yes. Yeah, so technically, we're right now, our second testnet is still on. There is a bug bounty attached to that. Uh, we are no longer accepting bugs for UI. Uh, and front end, but we are still accepting uh, bugs for any kind of errors for um, for the back end. So there is still an opportunity to to you know make some money if somebody finds something. Awesome. And how can people get involved uh, in that process? Where can they reach out to uh, be sure that they're you know uh, doing the process correctly? So you can always reach us uh, via uh, our, the email business at glitter.finance. Uh, you can also reach us on our official Telegram group. Um, be very careful. There's a lot of fake ones there, but uh, you can go to our website, click a button, and we'll get you right there. You can also reach out via Discord and Twitter. Yeah, it's a great mention to to even say to, you know, be careful on certain, uh, you know, websites you go to, Telegram links, you know, always try to go to either, you know, the Glitter Finance Twitter page and try to find, I believe on the website at the bottom, you'll be able to see if I'm correct. Yeah, uh, yeah you'll be able to see links to the Twitter, the Facebook, LinkedIn, Telegram, and always try to use those official links because we experience the same thing over here at YouTube where people will 
basically make a channel that looks exactly like your channel and comment to the comment section. And then all of a sudden people think they're talking to the channel they yeah. just watched, but they're, yeah, but they're not. Uh, so we see these types of uh, impersonation pages and channels all the time. So I appreciate that heads up for the audience. Uh, yeah, well, David, course. this has been uh, fantastic. Is there anything that I haven't asked about or, you know, anything about glitter finance or the roadmap coming up that you'd like to bring the attention to, to my audience that we haven't brought up yet? Um, you know, um, I think everything was covered in general. Um, you know, I, I think that it's, it's, it, I hope that it will be exciting for the community to work with Sol, um, on, you know, on their terms in their ecosystem, and then maybe to go to Radium and try it out, uh, in the Solana ecosystem. And, uh, I'm always open for, uh, questions, comments, anybody that wants to reach out to clarify anything and yeah so uh, always available awesome i appreciate that i think after this video sometime today i actually might check out uh the bridge itself and maybe explore some of these ecosystems because i haven't explored solana that much i haven't explored the cosmos ecosystem that much but with this bridge and some people asking me in my audience to do blockchain comparison videos i think it's about time i dive into these ecosystems so i'll let you know what i think of the mm -hmm. product once i do so and I, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come on the show yeah, thank you. I, 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 by the way, I would be very interested to see your video, uh, comparison video, especially since you know you know so much about Algo. It would be great to see your perspective on on other blockchains and yeah, ecosystems. See, I started in 2017 with Ethereum, and then of course you know the chains like Neo. I don't know if you've heard of Neo and and Tezos and whatnot. They came out in 2017. Mm -hmm. I tried those as well, uh, but really I didn't try many other ecosystems until Algorand came along. So outside of a couple you know, 2017 ecosystems like, uh, you know, Ethereum's, of course, and Neo, as I just mentioned, it's really just been Algorand centric for me. So I do need to branch out and I will, uh, I'll let you know how that goes. Awesome. Thanks. <laughs> awesome. Well, uh, thanks again for taking your time out of the day to come on to the show. I'm sure everybody in the audience appreciates it. I appreciated learning more about this product. And if you ever want to reach out and come back on the show, just let me know. I will do. Thank you so much. Awesome. Appreciate Take care, it. David. I appreciate it. Uh, cheers. Bye-bye. Thank you. That was my conversation with David, the CEO and founder of Glitter Finance. Let me know down in the comments below what you thought of this discussion, what you think of Glitter Finance, and what you think of bridging in general. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. Sometimes bridging is a controversial topic in the ecosystem. However, interoperability is very important for the crypto space. Very happy David took the time to come on the show today. If you haven't done so already, smash that thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, Hit us up in the comments down below for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to ping that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. All that being said, thanks for staying to the end of this video, and we will catch you in the next one. Thanks.